when then Vice President Goodluck Ibele Jonathan assumed the position of Commander-in-Chief in May 2010, the nation was reeling from months of uncertainty and political tension. The next year, Jonathan decided to seek the mandate of the people on his own terms. After elections that were acknowledged locally and internationally to be the freest and fairest in recent history, he won a landslide victory endorsed by Nigerians from all walks of life and from all parts of the country. His election signified more than his personal victory. It was a victory for democracy. From his days as acting president, Goodluck Jonathan took steps to reform the electoral process by strengthening INEC, installing a strong chief in Professor Atahiru Jiga, and assuring that members of the commission were non-partisan. He also promptly signed electoral bills that would protect the integrity of the ballot. For many Nigerians, the 2011 elections were the first time they truly felt that their votes counted. Since then, the president has continued to show respect for the democratic process, refusing to interfere in various state elections, and fiercely protecting the independence of INEC. On Inauguration Day, May 29, 2011, the new president spoke passionately to Nigerians about his vision, not just for change, but for complete and utter transformation. The day of transformation begins today. We will not allow anyone to exploit differences in creed or tongue to set us one against another. He unveiled an agenda to reposition the country, reorient society, and revitalize the economy. He promised to create jobs, ensure an enabling environment for small and medium enterprises, invest heavily in infrastructure, improve healthcare and education, and put power reform at the heart of his industrialization strategy. As President Jonathan embarked on the new term, he faced challenges resulting from years of systemic failure in governance, years of broken promises to the Nigerian people. Today, we stand at the midterm mark and thanks to the hard work of the president, vice president and a world-class executive team, the report card is commendable. Yes, Nigeria remains a work in progress, but there has been a great deal of work done and a significant amount of progress made. Nigeria's economy is expanding at more than 7%, one of the fastest growth rates in the world. This is fueled largely by the booming industrial sector, which grew 8.2% in 2012. The government has reduced the fiscal deficit to 1.81% of GDP, cut domestic borrowing to 744 billion naira in 2012, and inflation dropped to about 8.5% this year from 22% in 2011. As international agencies have upgraded Nigeria's credit rating, Nigeria's sovereign bonds have been included in international bond indices, and Nigeria is now the preferred destination for investment in Africa, accounting for over 20% of all inflow. At his inauguration, the new president pledged to work for an efficient and affordable public transport system. Today, the previously comatose rail system has been revived. New electric locomotives and tank wagons have been bought and Nigerians now have a fast, safe and affordable alternative to road travel. The historic Lagos Kano line is carrying passengers and haulage for the first time in 15 years and work is ongoing for the Port Harcourt to Meiduguri, Lagos to Calabar, Ajaukuta to Wari, and Kaduna to Abuja lines. Rehabilitation work has begun on many federal roads and several critical roads are either fixed or in the process. With rapid pace, the Ministry of Works is also progressing on 81 other projects including the construction of a PPP-funded Second Niger Bridge. Thanks to the reform in the maritime sector, terminal concessions now attract impressive private investment. Cargo clearance time has been slashed from 39 to 7 days 
and new jetties, river and deep sea ports are being built and major rivers are being dredged. The Ministry of Water Resources has embarked on ambitious projects nationwide to increase the number of Nigerians with access to clean water. Meanwhile, in housing, the federal government is setting up a mortgage refinance company and the World Bank has pledged 300 million US dollars to support Nigeria's mortgage financing structure. Air travelers in Nigeria have witnessed the remarkable transformation of airports as the aviation ministry is carrying out a multi-billion naira plan to remodel all airports, build new cargo airports and four new international airports. The government is also developing a scheme to assist indigenous airlines to buy new planes and the Minister of Aviation is working hard to drum up foreign investment for the new airport hubs. In oil and gas, the Local Content Act passed by this government will create a potential 300,000 jobs in the sector annually. The Petroleum Industry Bill is close to passage and the bold decision to reduce oil subsidies led to the launch of the innovative Subsidy Reinvestment and Empowerment Program (SHOP) in February 2012 to invest subsidy savings into priority infrastructure projects. Meanwhile, government has committed more than 60 billion naira for oil and gas exploration in the Lake Chad Basin, hoping to diversify Nigeria's production base. New gas projects and plants are coming on stream to increase natural gas production to 4 million barrels per day. Despite the inherited challenges in the sector, power generation reached peak historical levels at 4,500 megawatts. The privatization of electricity generation and distribution companies is in progress. New power stations have been commissioned. Rural electrification projects are ongoing. Alternative energy sources are being developed and several transmission projects have been completed. By the end of 2012, system shutdowns had reduced by more than half the rate in 2009. Furthermore, the establishment of the Nigerian Bulk Electricity Trading Company NBET, the new Electricity Tariff and Tax Incentive Shave attracted foreign investment including an MOU with General Electric for 10 billion US dollar power plants and 200 million US dollar agreements with two French companies for transmission projects. By applying a value chain approach to boosting the commercial potential of export crops, the Ministry of Agriculture headed by Dr. Akimumi Adeshino is literally transforming the sector, adding more than 8 million metric tons to the domestic food supply by the end of 2012. The reformed fertilizer sector is attracting huge investment, such as a massive US-backed fertilizer plant in Delta State that will create more than 4,000 jobs. The successful commercialization of cassava has led to the use of cassava flour by large corporate bakeries. The revival of the moribund cassava processing farms and flour mills. Meanwhile, Nigeria has secured contracts worth 136 million US dollars to supply dried cassava chips to China. China Exim Bank has also agreed to finance 18 cassava processing plants, which will make Nigeria the largest processor of cassava flour in the world, creating new markets and thousands of jobs. Meanwhile, Nigeria is moving from being the world's largest importer of rice to being able to produce enough rice for both local consumption and export. Large rice farms and dozens of mills have sprung up and US company Dominion Farms is investing $40 million in a rice farm in Taraba state that will save Nigeria $342 million US dollars a year in importation costs. Job creation is a key tenet of the transformation and all major government contracts are indexed on the number of jobs they create. 500,000 jobs for youths will be targeted annually through the National Industrial Skills Development Program and SHOP projects will lead to the hiring of 10,000 youths per state. Furthermore, over 700 companies and 80,000 graduates have registered for the Graduate Internship Scheme.
The administration's industrialization drive is bearing fruit and the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, MAN, recently confirmed that thanks to the government's initiatives such as sanitization of the ports, promotion of Made in Nigeria products and the backward integration policy, 240 new factories opened last year with a projected turnover of 140 billion naira. The government is boosting the pivotal micro, small and medium enterprises sector by backing legislation to strengthen microfinance banks, introducing partial credit guarantee schemes and bolstering its development finance institutions. Furthermore, the Ministry of Finance's innovative UN program is supporting new businesses that are projected to generate over 100,000 jobs over three years. The administration is also supporting the potential for job creation and economic growth in the culture, tourism and creative industries by raising Nigeria's tourism profile on the global stage and launching the 200 million US dollar entertainment loan fund and the 3 billion naira grant program for Nollywood. This is an administration that protects rights, supports civil liberties and respects the opinions of its citizens, including the press. The president has also shown real commitment to gender equality, appointing a cabinet of 35% women, placing many at the helm of key portfolios. In terms of foreign policy, Nigeria continues her big brother role on the African continent. But there is now greater emphasis on economic diplomacy to support domestic growth at home. As a former university lecturer, education is dear to the president's heart. His administration has vigorously promoted primary school enrollment, undertaking unprecedented levels of school construction and renovation, reviewed curricula, set new standards for undergraduate and postgraduate levels, and invested billions in teachers' training. This government has also granted hundreds of licenses for technical and vocational colleges and established nine new federal universities. So there is now one in every state, giving millions more access to affordable higher education. Marginalized groups have received specialized attention and in 2011, President Jonathan opened the first Almajiri model boarding schools. In the health sector, some key achievements include the distribution of ambulances and blood banks, Guinea worm eradication, the establishment of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, the innovative deployment of ICT in the fight against fake and counterfeit drugs, and the rehabilitation and equipping of several teaching hospitals. The creation of the Ministry of Communication Technology was an innovation of the Jonathan Presidency, and some of the key achievements thus far include the launch of the e-government cloud and single window portal, the establishment of 240 IT centers across the country, and the deployment of PCs and internet access to several hundred educational institutions. Sports development is a powerful vehicle for youth empowerment and national cohesiveness. The phenomenal victory of the Super Eagles at the 2013 African Cup of Nations was like a symbol of the ongoing transformation in the country. Other sporting highlights include Nigeria's high ranking on the medals table at the London 2012 Paralympic Games, the 2011 All-Africa Games and the 2012 Commonwealth Games. The government is working hard to identify and eliminate corruption across different sectors from the flushing out of ghost workers from the civil service saving 100 billion naira in government spending to the transformative work of the Nigerian Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative NEITI to ensure the accountability of the oil and gas sector through its comprehensive industry audit. Security remains a challenge but government is tackling the issue head-on, declaring a state of emergency recently in three states, establishing anti-terrorism units across the country, and providing the military and the police with state-of-the-art equipment, operational infrastructure and training. K-24 
kidnapping in the Southeast has been reduced and peace has been sustained in the Niger Delta, which led to a massive increase in oil production from 700,000 to 2,500,000 barrels per day by December 2012. The rate of innovation in this administration is unprecedented. From Amcon to Kiro Direct, from performance contracts for ministers to Shaw P, this government has brought new ideas and creative solutions to the table. This is also a very inclusive government, reaching out to political rivals, the private sector, the international community, the National Assembly, and most importantly, ensuring that the reforms are inclusive of every part of the country and of all levels of people. Investment bank Goldman Sachs named Nigeria as one of the emerging economic powerhouses tagged Mint, Mexico, Indonesia, Nigeria and Turkey. As British Prime Minister David Cameron said, which country is predicted by some to have the highest average GDP growth in the world over the next 40 years? Think Africa, think Nigeria. Of course, Nigeria still struggles with major challenges, but this administration has put in place a clearly articulated manifesto of reform that is bringing Nigerians measurable benefits and a renewed sense of optimism. In the end, transformation is about more than the number of roads being built or airports being revamped. The heart of the transformation agenda is people. Behind every chart, graph or statistic are people. Underpinning every policy is the mission to drive a paradigm shift in Nigeria's human capital development. President Jonathan knows what it is like to be on the social and economic fringe, to lack access, but he also bears witness that dreams do come true, that the impossible is possible and that transformation can be achieved. Transformation is a goal and a clarion call to all citizens to partner with the government to build the Nigeria of the future. We owe it to ourselves, to our children and to our country to answer that call. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria.